Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Morgan Price and today we are back in Stationeers. Sorry for being missing the last couple of weeks. I had a sore throat and it took me a little while to recover from it. So I'm back here to restart these tutorials. Well, or at least start this tutorial. So this tutorial is about pipes and canisters and tanks. So let's get into the things to think about. There is always a limit. Everything has a pressure limit of some sort. So take for instance these kind of tanks right here and the uh, insulated variants. So these are rated at 60 MPA um, but not because of the tank. Technically these actually have no true limit other than their volume but you're limited by the pipes. So the pipes are rated for 60 MPA maximum you can't fill these things up more than that because what it'll do is um, blow out your pipes. So that being said, um, moving on, these guys here, portable uh, gas tanks, have a limit of um, 10 MPA and the canisters, these little uh, gas canisters, have a limit of 10 KPA or 1 MPA. So anyway, with that, we're going to go over here. Pressure and volume are two different things. So all these tanks, including those guys over there, have um, the pressure that you can pump them up to plus a volume. Now, the volume isn't quite as important unless you are moving around things with a volume pump, which we'll get into when we go over to that battery of stuff there. But, um, so, these small tanks here, both the insulated and the, um, regular, uh, hold 6,000 liters worth of gas. Um, the large one holds 50,000 liters. The portable tank here will hold 790 liters, and your canister will hold 64 liters of gas. So, that's actually quite a bit, honestly. Um... I'm not 100% sure on the liquid uh, side of things. I think it's similar, but since I haven't tested everything out with the liquid, I'm a little off on the pressures. I'm just going to cover that there are liquid variants of all of these, so it's probably pretty similar. Next up is explosions equal fire. So as you can see, we're on Europa, which has an atmosphere. Um, and it's oxygen. So anytime you have something explode, it's going to start fires. You want to be cognizant of that because if you have an oxygen-rich environment and you accidentally blow a tank, you're going to catch everything on fire and it's a bit of a pain. All right, moving on. Don't pack canisters full. Like I said, the canisters can hold 10 kPa max. You don't want to pack them full all the way up to 10 kPa, specifically because um, we're going to go over here. Expansion is inevitable. Because the gas expands when it's warmed up, you want to leave a little bit of room in the tank for the gas to expand. You also want to be aware of how hot it is. So you can have tanks explode because they got too hot and they didn't have enough room inside for the expansion so the tank will explode so that welding canister in your in your flame welder if you're on a hot planet like venus or um, vulcan what will happen is, is the heat will cause your tanks to explode because um, there's no room for expansion in them moving on pressure alone won't always move uh, air from one canister or one tank to a canister, things like that. You're going to more than likely need some sort of pump. So a pressure regulator, a volume pump, one of those things is likely necessary, or even an active vent. An active vent works as a pump for this giant tank of air that I am walking around in with the giant planet in the background. Um, next up is Volume pumps are based off current volume, not maximum volume. So when you are drawing from one of these tanks, your volume pump is only going to 
uh, pump at its maximum if this thing is packed full of your gas. Um, as it goes down, you will lose efficiency in the pump. But that's not saying that volume pumps are useless. They have very, very many applications. So um, I'll go over a few of them, but I don't have a lot of hands-on experience with them. So next up is pressure regulators are your friends. Be it pressurizing your base, be it making sure your tanks don't explode, which I'm going to show you uh, with that setup over there. Um, pressure regulators are going to be your friends because you can set that pressure at a, a lower point than what you're looking for. So say you were pressurizing a room and you wanted 100 kPa. You can set it for 99 kPa and what will happen is is it will pressurize the room to 99 kPa. It warms up a little bit in there. You get a little bit more pressure from the air being warm. Uh, so it takes up a bit more space. Uh, then you have back pressure regulators, which are basically, um, if it gets above a certain point, it will pump in until it gets below that point. So if you have a back pressure regulator set for... 105 kPa on this room that we were talking about pressurizing, it would draw in so you don't go too far past 105 kPa. So with that, let's actually get into the items that we have. So we have the liquid side of things. Um, there is a Mark II liquid tank, there is the liquid tank connector, and then the liquid storage tanks themselves. Uh, if you follow me over here, we have all the pipes and assorted equipment that goes with them for the liquid side. You have a liquid volume pump, um, insulated liquid pipes. Oh, I did forget to put in the cooling radiators, but... Um, those are specifically something that clamps to the outside of a pipe that allows you to take the heat inside the pipe and disperse it into the atmosphere. So um, they're very handy. Uh, let's see, what is this? This is a liquid digital valve. So digital valves allow you to use um, like the IC10 programming in order to... Uh, automatic automate turning on and off particular fluid movements uh, following that up is the liquid valve which is just a hand version of the auto of the uh, digital valve um, pipe meters of course these tell you what the pressure is inside of the pipe um, pressure regulators and back pressure regulators are exactly the same thing uh, as with the gases and you have pipe meters and volume pumps and a heater. So the pipe meter just, it's similar to the uh, gauge. They ha just have a, oh, my, my bad. It is the liquid pipe analyzer. It is similar to the gauge, only it will give you more information on what's in the pipe. So take, for instance, the pipe analyzer for gases. It will tell you what gas is flowing through it, what the pressure is. I think it tells you the flow rate, but I'm not 100% certain because I haven't done a lot of work with these. And you can use that to set up even more automation. Um, the turbo volume pump is an interesting new creature that they uh, introduced in the previous update to this one. It is kind of neat because you can switch it, you can switch its directions, um, and you can set it to where it will take, uh, I think, up to 10,000 liters worth of um, liquid or gas, because there is a gas variant of the same thing, and move it at a high rate of speed. So rather than moving, say, Hmm, okay, yeah, say 50 liters, it'll move 500 liters as the base setting. 
and you can drop these down to where they use a little bit but it is a power hog it will exponentially use more and more power following that up we have the pipe heaters so you have a um, pipe heater which will transfer 1000 joules of heat into your pipe medium so if it's liquid it'll transfer 1000 joules of heat into the uh, water in the pipe if it's gas it'll do the same thing for gas now with gases be careful if you are moving gaseous fuel around because if you heat it up too much and you route it through one of these heated pipes you might cause an explosion I don't think they get that hot but I'm not 100% certain because again new item I haven't played around tons with it now something unique to the gas side of things is the gas mixer now what this will do is take two different gases and combine them into something else so say you take volatiles or hydrogen and some oxygen and run them into the input sides of this it will output fuel on the opposite side so it is a way of mixing your um, your fuel to where you will yeah it'll, it's a way of mixing your gases to make combination gases like standard air fuel um, nitrous oxide things like that so moving along we come to the pipes and canisters. Now, this guy will actually be done a little bit later. Um, this is what most people do for early, early game, um, filling up their uh, canisters. But this one over here, we actually have a smart gas canister in here. So, oh, and let us put this guy onto the pipe so as I said pipe meters are kind of your friend um, what they will do is they will allow you to have a pressure um, not the author there we go they will tell you what the pressure in a pipe is um, which will also give you an idea of what is in um, the tank that you're filling so with that we're going to use this pressure regulator here so I have a set the 900 or 9900 kPa and what that'll do is that will draw the gas out of here and put it into that tank there and it won't let it go beyond 9900 so as you can see it is moving the pressure up it's not terribly fast, but it is fast enough to get the job done. So this shouldn't get beyond the yellow by too much. Um, as I said, it'll be about 9.9 .9 MPA. Uh, I can't recall if the smart canisters take more or less no I think they probably take more but I'm not 100% certain so I could not tell you all right and I'm pretty sure that this tank is empty but yeah this tank is just about empty the, um, so I don't have the full amount that you can fit or I don't have the full amount in here but let's see yeah, it has uh, 6.3 kPa. So, yeah, we're good. And we can turn this off now. And following that up, this is this creature. And so what's going to happen here? Uh, set inward. Okay. And what most people wind up doing, so say you were trying to recharge your fuel canister, you would have a... Uh, either one or two um, frame sized room which would allow you to uh, thaw out gases like uh, volatiles 
and it's pretty much standard. Uh, fuel is two pink, one blue. Um, pretty standard across the board for just about everything. And you would thaw those chunks of ice in the room and then use the active vent to suction it in. Now, what you can do, and I need to open this up. We're going to put in the Atmo Analyzer. Put this over here and turn it on. Uh, why? This should be working. Oh, wait. Nope, there it goes. Alright, I had it set wrong. Works very, very fast. And we're going to get away now. So, that is now to the point where it should explode relatively soon. Now, there it went! And that's the first time I've died on camera, too. So, yeah, if you overpressurize those, you're going to die. And as you can see, that simple canister will wipe out a lot. Oh, yeah, because it's creative, I popped up in, uh, without a suit on. So let's, uh... Um, grab, grab my body, come on! Alright, let's, um, of course I hit the wrong button. Suit, on, helmet, on. Alright, so we're going to do... Um, everything is on. I'm a bit surprised at this. I'm really surprised at this. Okay, anyway. With that, we're going to die again? I don't get why this is doing this this way. And it looks like I no longer have a body. Okay, well. With that, ah, there's my old body. Here's my current one. Alright, let's put these things on again. So there's a bug going on that is just killing me out, killing me out right. Anyway, with that, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this, please click that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below to let me know what you think, and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.